Hi all, welcome back to Fields of Fire. Uh, still doing the Normandy campaign. This is uh, the very first part of Mission 3. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to call it Mission 3. <laughs> St. George del Le Parc Defensive. Um, yeah, and I noticed one of the threads I looked at just, just initially, just with the title there, that uh, uh, I think it was Billy who's commented a couple of times must have been trying to play this, was having difficulty with working out because this is a combat patrol mission. Um, I think one of the things that caught him out was because this had the word defensive in the actual title, but I mean, that is just the title of the mission. But you can see how maybe you could get caught with that and just straight off think it was a defensive mission. However, there is only three types of mission, offensive, defensive, and combat patrol. So... Yeah, I mean that's a that's as a type of mission. Okay, maybe maybe it could be a little confusing there, but um, anyway, yes, uh, this is going to be a bit tricky because it's it is much different. Um, so I mean, I'm hoping to get things right, but uh, again, we are using the old play raids. It would be great to have the new. Sorry, we're using the old mission books and play raids as well. Uh, however, the rules for combat patrols, there are some rules in the, in the new rulebook, we've got that. Um, but I guess it would have been nice to have these because there might be some updates to these just to make certain things clearer um, and keep you on the straight and narrow. Eh? Um, so, right, hang on. Yeah, you always think you're fully prepared and ready to go and an hour and 40 seconds or something. I get distracted. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not quite sure where I was in my <laughs> description of what we're doing. Uh, so, yeah, Combat Patrol. See if it can come back to me. Yeah, I was talking about the actual mission, the mission books being the old ones, wasn't I? Um, but we, we, we do have the, the new rule book, of course. So... It should be fine, but there may be some bits. Now, I have done this a couple of times before, uh, this mission. Uh, I want to see I maybe go up to mission 5, which I think is again another combat patrol mission. Um, some of the bits I was reading in the rules kind of threw me for a moment. There's a bit of word in that kind of makes you think... Well, it made me think at first, but it's maybe just the way Grant reads it. I'll show you that in a minute, hopefully. So my guess is this part will probably just be trying to work things out, setting things up. I've got most, well, I've got part of things set up, but just getting things set up and working out what we're doing and uh, uh, whether there'll be much gameplay or not. Well, let's read, read, like I say, these are the second edition mission books. So so we've got mission uh, June 20th through July the 10th, 1944. These are patrols against German paratroops. So, mission details, type, combat patrols, okay. Duration, 10 turns, right, so still the 10. Visibility, now this is going to be new, so we're going to have to remember this straight straight away. Randomly select a limited visibility between plus 2 and plus 5. Right, uh, I don't recall how that works, but you can obviously imagine that um, uh, looks like the... Yeah, well, I'll, I'll need to look at it. I'll need to look at it. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not saying which one's better than the other because I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that... I mean, the plus you would think might be defensive, but... I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to... I'm better looking rather than try to work it out. So we've got five columns by four rows this time. So we've got an extra card, an extra row. So I had to go and hunt out another Korean card to put, uh, to put on the staging area. Um, but it's only going four, uh, four rows in rather than we had five rows the last time. We had four columns by five rows the last time in the second mission. We start in row one. You'll see we start in row one. So in actual fact, there's a staging area here and... Well, I, I've just left it in whether it's... Whether you can put it to use or not, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But it's there anyway. So, But we actually start on row one, not on the staging area. Now, attempts. You must attempt the mission once with each platoon. So we've got to do this three times. So it's going to be three times, and it's going to be ten turns per time. Um, now, 
yeah, as we look more into this, I think this is something that you maybe don't need to do. It doesn't affect your standing within the campaign, I don't think. You will still, uh, however, gain experience. And some of this is what I, th I believe is how it works. But um, the thread that, um, that Billy did put up there, as I've got it up on the computer just now, um, and Andrew's answered all these questions, although I was... I was pretty understanding of each question he was asking, to be honest, I think. Unless there was maybe a one or two that might have might have been nice to see an answer. It's always nice to see confirmation of these. Um so yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure, but I mean it does it does say you must attempt this mission once with each platoon. We have three platoons. Uh do you want to see a recording of that three times and with each different platoon? Well, you know what, if I'm going to play it, I'll record that. Um, if you want to just watch the first attempt at it, and then for Platoon uh, 2 and 3, which I'll, I'll try and put that in, whether I'll call it first attempt, that makes me sound like I'm failing at maybe, you know, first attempt, second attempt, third attempt. So I might try and word it in a way like, first platoon, first platoon's attempt, you know. It just might be a little bit a long-winded sort of title, but... Uh, and then, if, like I say, if I do do all three, then you can maybe just watch one if you if you don't want to watch them all. Um, but if I do that, I'll I'll be playing through it. So, uh, which is fine. That's what I want to do. Um, well, unless I decide that look, we've done that once. Do we need to like do all three? It does say it there though. Like I say, you must attempt it. But it doesn't affect the campaign. You can move on with campaign. Ah. Right, this is one big thing. I, I'm going to have a look at this. I meant to look at this already last night and I forgot. It was the one thing I meant to check up on. When we've completed this mission, mission three, when we've done all this, I want to say that the map that we're on just now, we use for the next mission. Because basically what's happening is these units are going out on patrol, patrol in the area, and then we're going in in the next mission and the offensive is to push through the area. So I think some of the things that we find on these cards uh, well, regarding cover, possibly even if we leave enemies behind, then they might start on the next mission. I'm going to have a, a little look into that. Um, but let's, let's just read through this first. So we start in row one, you must attempt it. Right, okay. So the mission goal is you must move the platoon selected to the primary objective in row four and return it to row one. So basically we go up to row 4, to the objective, and then move back. You must choose the route, marking it with route points. You do not have to clear the route or objective, just move to it and return. So all we need to do is move to that objective via some waypoints, route points, whatever you want to call them, and then move back. Uh, now the route coming back can, can be different or it can just be on the same, the same route as you went. You can go straight and straight back. Um, I want to say that the benefit to not coming back the same route is you're exploring other cards, maybe finding some cover. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. To be honest. Uh, possibly whether it whether it counts for clearing the card. You know, if you find an enemy and it's clear, I I don't know. Like I say, I'm going to move on and have a look at the next mission. The selected platoon is the only unit that you may move beyond row one. So it's not that we don't have the company with us. But um, we only we can only use uh, the one platoon and whatever's attached to that platoon to carry out the mission. Uh, okay, and here's initial placements. Place two foxholes per card in row one. Place the main line of resistance control between rows one and two. You may place one combat outpost with up to two foxholes on any card in row two. Place the primary objectives in row four. Uh, I was a little confused that that was a, a plural there with the S on the end. Um, but as far as I'm aware, it's just the, the primary objective. It's not a primary and a secondary or... It's just one, so my guess is it's probably just a typo there. So place the primary objective in row one on a different card for each mission. So you can see that we're going to have to do it three times, place it on... You know, I mean, it, this, it shouldn't take as long... This, but although it still is ten turns, 
remember I am only moving one platoon so that's, you know there's not I'm not doing dealing with the whole company so it is possible that I could put this all into just one section um of videos uh, but we'll see we'll see how it goes um, you may place a target marker on any card per 6.7.5 refer to 11.1 .1 for missions after the first right that part I'm going to have to look at as well the target marker I want to see is that where you can put the artillery fire coming in can't you I know we've read about that somewhere before but uh, I'm not awfully sure about that and then this part about refer to 11.1 .1 for missions after the first Obviously, once we've done one mission, we need to then, yeah. And of course, these are these are referring to rules that are going to be different numbers in the the rule book as well. Well, I, I I suppose I need to look at the. Well, let's do that while we're looking at that, Grant. Let's look for six point seven point five first. Uh, yeah, it's the targets thing. Uh, so there it's their register targets. Instructions, and again, this is second edition rule book. So I know where that section is. We've read it before anyway, so in the new rule book. So we'll wait for that. But I suppose because it's linked the old mission book, then I should just, just glance over this. Instructions for some missions indicate that you can begin the mission with a register target off, off, off map artillery, but not mortars. If so, place a target marker on the card of your choice. You may also place a target man on the court. Yeah. Actually, we're still not been doing that. I've, <laughs> I forgot all about that. Yeah, because I found that that was something new that I'd realised. And you know what? I, I'm saying it was something new, and I'm starting to wonder. I've got vague memories of possibly using that uh, back when I played the game, when I think about it now. The the thing with it is, it doesn't... Does it mention the enemy? Did we, did, did we decide it did mention the enemy? I think it does. I'll need to because if they ever fire, um, uh, if they ever fire off map artillery or mortar, so if they've got a forward observer and they fire once, then we should put one of the target markers on, and we should do it for ourselves because it's given. It gives us one extra card draw, and um, as as you can see there, add another card draw for an attempt to call for fire from an off map firing unit for. Any fire by the register fire needs to see on the card containing its target marker. So, well, what we're doing here in this mission would give us the extra card draw as well, I assume. And, uh, is that all it's doing, is it, when we call for fire? It's not It's not really doing anything automatic then, is it? Ah, I see. All it's achieving is giving us an extra card draw, I believe. For some reason, at first I thought it was something that we were going to some extra call for fire that that happened throughout the mission, but that's not really what it's saying there. We'll have a little look at this in the new rulebook as well, anyway. Okay, and that other part was what was that? Eleven point one. Um. Yeah, yeah, it's it's reattempting a failed mission, and this is basically not what. The well, the title of that is not what we're doing, but what we are doing is we're reattempting a mission, so we need to go through these instructions. Well, again, I'm going to look at uh, the new rule book for this, and we need to go through these step by step. So, <clears throat> we've done with say we do first platoon, and then when we want the second platoon to do it again, we go through this because I don't the map doesn't change or anything like that, it's, so you just go through these um, and see. But I'll look at the new version of that as well. So you can see right away there is going to be a bit more to this than just getting right in. And I was hoping I've got just a little bit of time just now just to maybe get to a part where we can maybe start playing. But I'm not so sure I'm going to have all the time for that. So that's that bit done. And there's our historical opponent, opponents, the third. False. False mate. No. Division. <laughs> I'm not gonna even try it. Uh, so quick look at support. We've got the same support again. Battalion fire missions are available. Um, interestingly, we've got an extra attachment. We've got the artillery forward observer, the mortar forward observer. We've got a heavy machine gun team. We've got two heavy machine gun teams. 
With six ammo each. Right. So, whew. okay. I'm assuming we can assign them to a platoon then. Hmm. Uh, okay. Right, and then I won't look at the events. We'll just keep them. I mean, you can go and look at them if you want, but I'm not going to look at them. So, here's what we our experience, what we need to do. And this is this would be for each time that we try it. So, first platoon, second platoon, then third platoon. So, secure the prime objective card, two points. It does have an asterisk to that, which says points for securing a card are in addition to the points for occupying it. Okay. So, it's saying that if you secure it, it's secure, not occupy, though, anyway. Yeah, I think it is, but then they have to be different, and it's just a reminder there that you would get you would get both if you do both, whereas some of the ones before was, would suggest that you only get one of these scores. So if you secure it, which means clear it and um, occupy it, then you would get two points. If you just happen to occupy it, then the mission, but don't have it secured. So you occupy it and another enemy on it, then you would get their two points, but you wouldn't get their two. I think that's what that's coming around there, isn't it? And then we've got secure a root point card, which is one per card, and occupy a root point card. And again, you get you would get you would score for both of them. Okay, so you kind of want to leave units on these root points. Then, fair enough. Capture enemy prisoners, two per step. Capture enemy casualty, one per step. Successful grenade attack, one per attack. Complete an HQ event, marked to an asterisk that turn, one per event. Successfully evacuate a friendly casualty, one per casualty. Successfully evacuate. Right, there's two. Yeah, I can just su suggest it's going to be, well, it would be capturing an, en a friend a an enemy casualty, wouldn't it? No, we've got that one there though. Is it just, just a misprint that you're, they've got an extra one added in maybe? Looks like something's wrong there, because eh? they're both the same eh? instruction. Well, I can maybe have a look at that eh, later on. We'll, we'll see. Um, okay, and there's we've got another side. So, mission details is for the enemy. So hierarchy is defensive, so that's the same as what we've had. Uh, their tactics are deliberate this time, so that's back to where the first mission we were deliberate. Experience is veteran though, so we're going to have to remember that one. They're going to be veteran, uh, every one that we come across. And the default cover marker is foxholes. Um, some ammo here, squad slash white machine gun, six... Okay, so we're going to have to track ammo for them this time. Okay. The heavy machine gun's still eight. Mortar section is six. Ah, right, that's what that reference is there. Illumination, mortar. Right, because I wondered what... Well, I'll get to it in a minute. And then if the leader comes on board, uh, one rifle grenade is coming with them, so... I assume that whoever he's with could have that rifle grenade and use it. Um... They've got mortar and artillery spotters, obviously. Same again there. Yeah, the illumination part was down there, and it just says the German illumination comes from mortars. I can't see anything else that talks, discusses illumination. Ah, no, look, Grant. It's a package. Look, illumination plus white machine gun nest. Illumination down there as well. So illumination must be a... Yeah, it must be a thing. That either goes on the card or goes on the the card that triggers it. Maybe we'll we'll need to look into that as well. That's uh, all kind of new stuff. And then just finally, before we have a look at the map and things, we've got like I said, we've got five four rows and five columns. So four rows on row two, 
we have a random B or an C. On row three, we have a random B or a C. And on row four, we have uh, A's uh, for potential contacts. So, uh, well, I can go across the map now and explain it. Right, so what, I, what I've done is... Hang on, I'll keep that. I'll keep that there just now. Um, potential contact A's on row four at the back. They're always... Now, when I've done row two... I mixed up five B's and five C's, mixed them all up, and then weighed them out, question mark, side down, and then I, then I mixed up five B's and five C's for row three, and done the same. So these will either be B's or C's, we don't, we don't know. Um, there's a two foxholes on each card in row one. And uh, we still have, and there's a main line of resistance, which... What does it, um, I think it's near the beginning of the book, it talks about that. Give me a second. Uh, there's mainline resistance there. Um, hang on, hang on though. That's slightly confusing as well if it's talking about defensive missions as well. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be down in the combat control, but... Well, it talks about mainline resistance down there. Well, let's read that then. So, mainline of resistance, it says defensive mission TCM. TCM stands for uh, tactical control marker, right? Which is the heading of this part in the rules, tactical control markers. And it's it's all of these things. It's the boundaries, it's the these phase lines, which I thought we might have been using here. I think you just, yeah. These are for uh, offensive missions. Use the following. Right, left, line of departure, phase lines. Yeah, I think we could have been using them. What are the phase lines are used to coordinate advancing units? You can place up to two. Is it, yeah, you can attach these to pyrotechnics. Again, this is stuff that's, you know, you could, you kind of feel like a sort of advanced kind of rules that, or sort of, Sort of optional advanced kind of rules, I think, because we don't need to use this. We decided not to bother with pyrotechnic wise. All I've done is just cease fire, and I'm fine with that for now. I mean, I probably should try and liven it up a bit with adding something new, but probably not. I think for this for the patrol mission, well, you've got different. To be honest, there's there's different. You've got different options for whatever type of mission it is: offensive, defensive, combat patrol. Uh, a what the pyrotechnics you can use so anyway let's get back to this this is defensive mission tcm defensive missions are only one linear tcm the main line of resistance this represents a line before which the enemy advance must be stopped the mission instructions will tell you where to place the mlr if there are fuel fortifications and phone lines available for the mission these can be set up behind the mlr before the mission begins um okay and we're not doing a defensive mission. We are doing a combat patrol. But so combat patrol um, tactical control markers. Combat patrol missions use one linear tactical control marker, the main line of resistance, which marks the point from which the patrol sets out from friendly lines. So although it's using that this marker, it's not really this part doesn't really apply here. It's just saying that that's where we. St you know, the mark, the furthest point from the MLR that the patrol is supposed to reach. Uh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I've jumped ahead there. Yeah, so combat patrol missions use one linear TCM, the main line of resistance, which marks the point from which the patrol sets out from friendly lines. Uh, and then otherwise, combat patrol missions use one, use point TCM, use the primary objectives to mark the furthest point from the MLR that patrol is supposed to reach. You may also have to designate route points to mark out the path that the patrol must follow. This route may cross or come back on itself, so it is possible for a single train car to have more than one route point marker on it, and that's the route points there. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. So we're that's where we're starting our mission from, basically. That's where everything here is fine, um, and we're starting from here and then moving forward. Okay, um... So, yeah, where was that? Where was that? 
main line of resistance, right? And it says you may place one combat outpost with up to few, two foxholes on any one card in row two, which I'm going to do. Uh, I haven't done it yet because I thought we had to wait until we started. Um, so we've got that, and we'll look at a combat outpost in a second. Uh, place the primary objective in row four on a different card for each mission, and then you've got the target marker option, and then in between the missions, we're going to have to look at the rules regarding retrying a mission. Uh, so once we've finished with Platoon 1, we'll look and see how things move on. Um, right, what was a quick, quick glance at Combat Patrol? Um, no, the outpost, where is it? It's here. Uh, so again, this is talking defensive mission as well, but which is, yeah, it's not mentioning it. Well, it did. Did I not mention it here? No, it didn't, did it? Or does it mention it in here, maybe? Well, let's read it. Defensive missions may also allow you to place combat outpost, a, a combat outpost, cop point TCM. A combat outpost is a position set up in front of your MLR in order to confuse and break up an enemy attack. You may place units from a single platoon up to the stacking limit in a cop. Beside, besides moving your designated platoon units to and from the COP, assault teams may scout forward up to one row in front of the MLR. This action is only available in missions which place potential contacts in these rows. Um, okay. That's, yeah. No mention of combat patrols there for that. That's slightly concerning. I want to say that Billy's part of his question might have been talking about a combat outpost um, the thing was I don't think we could have anybody else beyond rule 1 um, that wasn't in the patrol, did it not even say that in a rules about combat patrol well you know what, I need to go to the rules in the rule book about combat patrols but what, what that's meaning is we can have a combat outpost and that's uh, what is it that's this here. So we could have this along with, um, was it a foxhole or two foxholes? Yeah, two foxholes. So we could put that maybe, I don't know, in this hedgerow bocage here on row two and a couple of foxholes. So I want to maybe think that we can put maybe second platoon or somebody underneath these foxholes in this. Um, now they can't then move, but they could fire from here. You know, they could fire. The other thing is, is potential contact on this, so, you know, hmm, that means this is going to, this is going to be triggered right away from the start, if you, but this is optional, I don't need, you don't need to do this if you don't want, so, okay, yeah, I reckon this part is just going to get this bit set up, because there's, there's a, a lot more, so that was all the mission details, uh, and our mission goal, was wherever we put our primary objective. I uh, was looking, we've got a farm up here, but remember, we've got to do it on different cards in each patrol, but whatever, let's just say we do it on the farm. And then we put these root points in, so we'd put maybe a root point here, root point one there, root point two there, and then the, and then the objective there. And then, uh, as for coming back, we'd have, let's just say we'd have root point three here, and then root point four here. I mean, that'd be a simple way to do it. So we go one, two, into the objective, three, four, back to the um, row one. Um, we could we could do things different. We could go, we could come back that way. So that would be one, two, up to there, and then back three, four, and then back to there. So I think you can do it however you want. Obviously, Obviously, you can make it slightly easier by just going through one potential contact. You could come back through, or you could, yeah, you could go up. You could either get three potential contacts, or my guess is you could get five in total, couldn't you? Yeah, I think so. Um... Okay, so I think that that's all that. What I want to do is look at the next mission, just to see if I can give me something, and then some rules about combat patrols, and then get the rest of the stuff set up, I think. 
Right, so just having a glance, there at mission four. So that's the next mission. I don't want to spoil things too much, but um, yeah, it's not really shown an awful lot. But just looking ahead, you can see this is going to be, this is the next again, mission after this. It's going to be offensive. It's going to be 10. It's back to daylight. So you can imagine these patrols are done through the night. Okay. It's five columns by four rows, which is exactly the same that what we've got. Uh, you start in row one, which is what we're doing just now. You may attempt this mission a total of two times. Occupying clear of enemy forces, primary and secondary objective, and clear rows two and three of any enemy forces. And then you can see that the setup here is pretty much the same as what we've got for these combat patrols. Place two foxholes per car in row one. You may place a combat outpost with up to two foxholes on any one car in row two. Place the primary and secondary objectives in any, any car of your choice in row four. Puts an attack position on any card of your choice in row three. So they, these are slightly different because obviously this is now an offensive mission. One other bit, just to look at, hang on. Across the other side, where is it? Yeah, no. I was just saying the potential contacts are yeah. So you you can see there that there's no there's no mention of this carrying over, but I'm gonna look now and I get the feeling that this has been left out of things and this is a continuation of our con combat patrols and I don't, don't, I want to say that at the moment the cards that we've got here, right, the setup of the cards, the fact that we've got a, oh and there you go again Mike, a church again so you've got something, you've got something now, look, a church again on row one, so this church come mission four, this will still be the same, I think the map stays the same, we don't change it um, potential contacts will change and there's some other things that will change um, uh, you know there's, there's no help to that though is there and that this is where I'd really wish that I had the mission books <laughs> Andrew did say that they were hoping to get them out they're, they are going to get them out sooner before they're released but that could still be a little bit away it would have been great to have got them now because now I'm moving on to a bit that just needs a bit of help. Because I'm going to go and have to search for some um, some threads here for combat patrols. Because I'm pretty sure that's what happens. I'm pretty sure this map stays the same. We don't redraw new cards for Mission 4. And certain things, I want to see if there's any, if we find any cover, I think they stay on the map as well. Maybe not enemies. I think I'd said the possible enemies, but maybe that's not. So, yeah, so some things to look into, yeah, definitely. Um, so let, let me go and try that first, because before we get started, we want to know about that. We also want some information on combat patrols and the rule book, which it does have a section somewhere. It's near the beginning, is it not, Grant? Uh... Defensive missions, defensive mi Ah, it's a sequence of play. Combat patrols, 2.6, page 12. Right, I'm going to go and look at... Um, yeah, here we are. So, combat patrols, it starts down here. But I'm going to go and pause and just have a look. Find out some information about... Uh, as we move on from mission 3 to mission 4. Okay, so we'll be back in a bit. Right, okay, I've been away trying to look through some threads and uh, like I've said before, uh, this game, mainly because of the rules and how they were, there's that many different threads out there, it's difficult to find information. And because, again, there was no authoritative answer, somebody with authority given answers, Again, I go back to Ricky Gray, the previous developer that was there. He used to answer a lot and then disappeared. And then you felt like it was just just fans answering the questions. Uh, I mean, to be honest, not all games have the designer or anybody with authority answering their questions. So sometimes you do have to rely on these people. Um, anyway, yeah, looking back and trying to find out how it, the transition is between... Mission 3 and Mission 4, I, I found myself even ans asking a question and actually I can see my frustration at the end of my question um, basically saying that I was thinking I was, I was almost at the stage where I had to give up with this game and it's possibly around about that time that I stopped playing again. I knew it was a brilliant game but it was just 
quests and quests and quests. It was too much. Now, I'd like to think if I had the mission books for the new... For mission 3 and mission 4 in front of me, that I would have a clear understanding of what I'm doing in between mission 3 and mission 4. Um, but if you look out there, and rather than me going through the... Uh, there is stuff that the designers involved in commenting on and Ricky Gray, the previous developer. I didn't want to start going through it all. Um, I mean, I might... It, it, the problem is, it's not a problem for me at the moment because it's when I get to the end of Mission 3, I'm going to have this problem. So uh, I've got plenty of time to work on that. So uh, that's fine. But I also thought it would be nice to have... And hope, here's, a, here's a nice wee th hopeful thought that while I'm doing this Mission 3, depending on how long it takes me, maybe these Mission 4 PDFs will be out there. Uh, sorry, not Mission 4. Um, third edition Mission books uh, might be out there come that time, and then I can see it all in front of me. However, once I do get to the end of this mission, I then need to know how we move on to Mission 4. So I've popped a question out there, mainly aimed at uh, Andrew or Colin. It does seem to be Andrew that replies. Uh, more not that I'm... I'd be happy for you to tell me as well, Colin. There's not a problem with that. Um, that maybe my guess is they must have. Well, they must have the information of these mission books, and I'm not asking for like, word for word to be well. That, to be honest, that that would be better, but <laughs> they maybe can't do that. It's maybe not possible to do that. But at least then they can maybe explain what it says regarding mission three at the end. What it says regarding mission four at the beginning. Um, it may be that there's nothing. It may be that they've revamped us and changed it, and you do reset the map and whatever. Um, but it's, it's nowhere clear in, in the mission book that I've got. It tells you nothing. Um, in fact, if you were playing it, you wouldn't even. Think, what I'm talking about, you're maybe scratching your head, saying, "What's he? What's he going on about?" It doesn't say anything about that, and it doesn't. You're right, but I think this is this was the intention. Although the answer I got back from the guy, the question I asked, I think he had said that he would have redone the redone the map because time has moved by. But the I, I want to say the answer that the designer I gave that it was meant to be the same area that you were going through. So that church will still be in the church space, you know, and that cemetery will still be where it is. You know, so you don't change that side of things. But some of the other stuff that gets left, I was asking about mines. What if mines are on a card? Do you think a minefield's still going to be there? But then again, time has passed. Maybe that minefield could be cleared. Uh, anyway, I was just, I, I was going to, st and cover markers, if you find cover markers, are they still going to be there? Sorry, maybe I should have been looking at the map while we we're doing doing some of that and and yeah i mean you know if it is in the same area and you're in this this at the moment we're just patrolling about trying to find our way what what the best way is to actually make once we make and this is through the night over the over the uh, over the length of a few nights or whatever i don't know how, how long like you patrol each night maybe maybe it's just over three nights i don't know um well it does it gives does it not give dates yeah between June the 20th through July the 10th. So it is over the space of quite a few days right enough, isn't it? And that's, that's quite a lot. A couple of weeks or something. Maybe more. Three weeks. So maybe it's a mission a week. Maybe a combat patrol every uh, a week or something like that. But I, I believe, although it doesn't say it's over the same area, I believe that was what the intention was. And you maybe find some information out there if you go looking. Like I say, if it is, then show that church is where it is and that cemetery is where it is. And then the other thing I've talked about, if mines are on a card, should they maybe stay there for the next mission, possibly? And if you find any cover markers on the card, do they get left, maybe? Um, it might not be. Um, I just, yeah, I just want to know what's going to happen. And I can't uh, find that out until we see the mission books for how it... You know, but my guess is Andrew and Colin have some idea of how it works. So I've asked the question, and rather than ask individual questions about do the terrain card stay, does the cover marker stay, you know, is there any enemies? I don't think the enemies are going to stay. If you think about it, as a, more, as a long time went by, the enemies have moved back and whatever, or they've hidden, they've dug in again, because you're going to get potential contact markers again. And then, um, yeah, one of, my, one of my questions seemed to refer to... Uh, Rule one saying about mines, but there's no 
Well, I think when you go to mission four, there, there may be potential contact markers on these cards. But then I read somewhere else that they only go on a card without a US unit. And I'll probably find that in the rules somewhere. So that might have been me blundering somewhere through it. Um, but I think it was it was round about the time that I decided to put the game away and hope for a rewrite of the rules. And that was back in 2019, somewhere. I don't know what the month was. Um, so it's quite possible that might have been one of my last posts. Um, maybe not. Maybe I still stuck at it because I love the game. So just wanted it clearer. Uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm kind of stuck here, so I've left that question out there for the guys to maybe give me some info on what, how we, how we move from mission three to mission four. What all happens there? You know, just, just make it clear for me. We're moving from combat patrol missions onto an offensive mission. Is any of this stuff get left behind, or do we completely reset everything and just carry on if it's, if it's a normal start to a mission? Because the thing is, these voxels are all placed here. It makes that's the that's the bit that makes you think. Oh right, well we had that in the previous mission. The same, the map's the same size, you know. I'm sure there's something going to be in the new mission books. That's and basically that's what I'm kind of looking for some, some of that information. Okay, uh, forty one minutes. Wow, and we're still not even near near set up. Right. Well, I was going to glance through the rules here. So combat patrols. This is on page twelve, two point six. Now, yeah, this, this is trickier. We've got to kind of go through this. There's not an awful lot here. So let's, let's read through it. Um, and in this first sentence, no, second sentence, was one that got me scratching my head initially. But but then when I reread it, I thought, right, OK, I, I know what that means now. So combat patrols. Patrolling is a, a constant activity for infantry units in combat. Most patrols take place at the squad level and thus are below the level for inclusion in the campaign. So at first I thought, right, these combat patrols, so they're not part of the campaign? You know, when I first read that. And I'm like, right, and then there was something saying to me, right, you don't need to do these if you don't want, I don't think. I think you could just move on to the next mission. So is that saying, but is that saying they're not part of the campaign, that they're just individual missions that you could just do, you know, like playing just a... Let's have a quick game of Fields of Fire and let's just set up that, uh, we'll do one of the combat patrols, you know, and it's not part of the campaign. But no, what this is saying is that it, combat, most patrols take place at the squad level. Well, we're not doing this at squad, and as we read on, um, yeah, as we read on the next sentence, it kind of clears it up, but I was just stuck with that. So it says, most take place at the squad level and thus are below the inclusion in the campaign. But it's, it's in the right next sentence, so I don't know why I was, like, scratching my head. So it says, the combat patrol missions are built around a platoon. A, a patrol of this size is typically meant to deceive the enemy, deny their reconnaissance, and possibly spoil their attack plans. The following rules are a guideline, and more specific information will be given in the mission instructions. So, it, it, it's talking at, they see in there, most patrols take place at squad level, but then it says the combat patrol missions that we're doing that are part of the campaign are built around a platoon. Yeah, okay. So I eventually got through that one and thought, right, so as part of the campaign, we're meant to do it three times, one for each platoon, uh, 10 turns, and see how we get on. Combat patrol set up. Unlike offensive and defensive missions, patrols are carried out by just a single platoon. Though you may also attach weapons teams, forward observers, and company staff, okay, and company staff, the mission instructions will uh, will indicate which platoons can carry out patrols. Uh, okay, well, again, we are basing things on the on the old mission instructions. So, but my guess is we've got to do one for each platoon. But this was questions that come up because apparently this was a bit vague back in the day about what you could bring with you. Could you attach teams, forward observers? And I think particularly it was a bit of a... It was contradicted in places that the staff... Some places it said that the staff were allowed to come and some places said that they weren't. So that's them clarifying that there in the new rules, which is good. Uh, the map often includes company positions, foxholes, trenches, bunkers, or a combat outpost, tactical control. All these positions may be occupied by the rest of the company, 
who may not move but are able to support the patrol by fire. You may place units from a single platoon up to the stacking limit in a combat outpost. Oh, hang on a sec. Nah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I was just reading about the combat outpost there and thought that it might have... Uh... But anyway, it's, this is patrols we're talking about and it's talking about a combat outpost. And... So you may place units from a single platoon up to the stacking limit in a combat outpost. And you can see there that that can be um, by the rest of the company. They may not move, but we could have we could be doing the mission with first platoon and we could put um second platoon into the combat outpost uh card under the uh you know up to stacking limits, which is what sixteen steps. I don't think the combat outpost has any restriction on you know, I think it's just the card, but that's where it is. So we could put them up there and then they would be able to support fire. <coughs> so they are kind of involved, but they just can't move. They're not allowed to move. It's only the patrol. It's only the platoon that's carrying out the mission at the time. So sorry, that carries on a little bit. Units positioned in a combat outpost or other friendly field fortifications may be repositioned between patrols. Although they may not move, HQ is not on the patrol itself. Still draw for commands in order to support the patrol. So, so you have your. You know, if you let's just say you have your second H, second platoon HQ in the combat outpost, first platoon's doing the actual patrol, but second HQ still draws for commands and gives commands to, maybe you've got the heavy machine gun in there, gives commands to to fire on the enemies that are further out that you know it can target, um so they can still set up PDS VOFs, it's just that they can't move, right? So combat patrol objectives. Uh, there is no need to clear or secure the objective or route points unless specifically required by the mission instructions. So you don't need to do it. And you can't, I don't think you can, you can't fail this. That's the thing. But however, you're going to get, we've seen the experience points already for securing and occupying certain ones and clearing, whatever. Therefore, it's not, necessif, not necessary for every unit from the patrol to stay on the path of the route points. Only one unit needs to touch each point as they go, though more than one may do so. Yeah, and they don't need to stay there. However, you've seen we were getting points for ending up on these way po route points uh, at the end of the mission as well. So it's not something you need to do. Um, and like I say, if you don't happen to get to the mission objective and back, I don't think it matters. Obviously, you're not going to get as many points, but I don't think it's not it's not a fail. I don't think you can fail it, like I just said already. <laughs> right, 2.6.3, setting up for the next patrol. Some patrols have you set up a new map for each platoon you send. However, if the mission instructions indicate that combat patrols are to be performed on the same map, um, well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't state that in our mission instructions, does it? It doesn't say that you're setting up a new map or whatever for this one. But again, it doesn't say, say you set up a new map for Mission 4 when you move on. But there is stuff out there that suggests that's what was meant to be. So, and that's why I'd like to see or at least hear about the new stuff between Mission 3 and Mission 4. And between the next um, uh, Combat Patrol as well, which I think might be Mission 5. Uh, let's see if it says anything about that between 5 and 6 maybe no well actually the map's different between mission 5 and mission 6 map size is different so there you go there so it might be that they've done away with all this and you just clear and set up again but hopefully Colin and, um, or Andrew and that will come and clear it up for me but I've got plenty of time before I need to know that so so yeah so however the mission instructions indicate that combat patrols are to be performed on the same map which is what we're doing which I'm uh, that's my understanding you place new PC markers between each patrol and the, as these missions are assumed to take place over days and weeks well we've seen that the it's about three weeks long the period so you can uh, take it's taking about a patrol every week no PC markers are placed on the cop if one is in play 
So okay, so if we play the place that combat uh, outpost, yeah, I was wondering about the potential contact that they are. We'll remove that potential contact, and I think if I look up rules for potential contacts, we'll find that in placement, none of them can probably be be placed on US units. Yeah, I'm not so sure about defensive missions though. Well, anyway, we'll we'll see. And um, but it says there are no PC markers are placed on the cop if one is in play. After each patrol, carry out the instructions in 3.9. Ah, okay, so now we've got a new rule to look at here. To adjust the map in pre oh. To adjust the map in preparation for the next patrol as if beginning a regular mission reattempt. Alright, well 3.9. Well, I'm interested to go and see what that is then. Yeah, well, as as I kind of thought, this is what was referring us to what 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 did we what did it refer to eleven point one in the old book? So it, it, I'm just reading the mission details here again. It says refer to eleven point one for missions after the first, and that's what this is doing here. But it's just obviously this is where they've got in the rule book. Now this is a re attempt. Uh, there's quite a lot in this. I don't think I'll go through this just now then, because there is a lot. I mean, it doesn't look up. It's just a paragraph or two there, but this is. It's all this as well. Uh, that's it, right enough. But um, so this is tell. So in between our in between our combat patrols. Uh, uh, right. So I'm I'm going to I'm required to do things now. So I figured that was. I kind of hoped I would maybe get everything set up, but we're still kind of stuck here. So I yeah, I won't look at this until we're ready to move on to the next attempt. You know, when when it comes to platoon number two. Um and uh, yeah okay and then um, so now basically now we want it we need to set up I mean I've not reset up our assets they're over there um I've not been putting them to much use have I um a few other counters to put up there we've got to decide what the moon level is going to be. Uh, these phase line markers, yeah, I'm not going to need them. These are kind of optional things. I suppose we should still have our boundaries, though, shouldn't we? Yeah, because we still can't go outside them. So our left and right boundary. Um, and our... What is it? The one as far as we can move. Actually, I don't think... Yeah, I can't use that because limit of advance because it's got combat outposts in the back, so I'm using that. So this, maybe we don't need to mark even the left and right as well, I don't know. Thing is, enemies could still spawn out there though, so... And and when we got to the top, when we get the farm, say that's our, um, our objective, then an enemy could still spawn up there. If we're not putting our limit of advance, does that mean we can move on, we could move on to that card? I don't know. I mean, we 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 are instructed to be told we only need to move to that and back. So, I'll take it as as that it's still the same that you can't go outside the boundaries or go further up the map, um, and leave that there if anybody wants to comment on that part. Then fair enough. And then I've got my combat outpost as well to place with my two foxholes. And then we've got our company obviously to set up. So, uh, my guess is. Uh, most of the stuff's going to be down here in the foxholes, but I still need to place them in a place that they might be able to fire. Um, now, well, this is, this is a good card because it's on a hill. So, you know, we can see over this and this into this. And in fact, we could, we could see right through to that woods at the back from that hill because that cemetery is... Well, we're on a hill anyway, Grant, so... And for that matter, we can actually see the farm of that. So it's quite important, this card, um, maybe to set up uh, maybe the heavy machine gun in there, maybe, possibly. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go and work that out, but I do need to go for now. So my guess is this is probably going to be an hour and <laughs> an hour and a bit of video. I'm not, going, I'm not just going to cut here as a part, because I'd rather get everything set up. But there's not going to be any gameplay in this part, for sure. Because um, there's still a little bit more to set up. 
Um, but I'll get it set up and I'll come back and we'll go through how I've set it up and whatever and then we can move on to part two of this and get the mission kicked off. So I'll hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to do that this evening. Um, I've got a few things to do the rest of the day though, so kind of tied up there, but but I've been quite lucky recently, so <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't be complaining. Right, I'll just go and pause for now though, and um, I'll be back with everything hopefully set up and ready to go uh, later on in the day. Okay, cheers. Hi all. Right, back to finish this first part of the Combat Patrol Mission 3. This is our first attempt at the Combat Patrol, so we're going to use... We're going to use second platoon. Um, don't ask me why, but um, <laughs> that's what I've decided. Um, one quick little thing to mention that I came across when watching back in some footage, and I'm just a little uncomfortable about it, and I've actually posted a question. Uh, I know there's not anything I can show you about this, but basically I can tell you it's not that difficult to um, grasp, I don't think. What it was was... Um, well, I can, I can show you something. We were trying to... Um, yeah, we were trying to uh, look at enemy activity in the last, in the sec in the last mission. Uh, a unit that was... It wasn't undercover, it was spotted. Um, however, it had a pending fire mission on it. And I chose to decide that that meant it was not under fire. And um, what what I chose was not under fire, uh, but has a valid target on PDF because it was firing at one of our units. We rolled on a two and got a one. And it was no action. Fortunately, there, when I checked uh, the roll on a five, it would have been a one as well, and no action as well because I'm starting to think that it maybe is. Uh, uh, classified as. Classified <laughs> as under fire but not under cover. Um, you know, that's what it's classed as, basically. That it is under fire because it's got the pending fire mission. Because I wasn't aware, I thought pending fire missions, it has been noted that they count as VOFs. So they do count towards um, your activity level, etc. It counts as a VOF. I mean, we know there's fire coming in on it. So I did kind of think that. It, May should it may have been this, uh, although I, I I thought about it at the time when I was doing this and I gave it some thought and decided no I'm, it wasn't under fire it was just when I was watching back I think well you know what that might be classed as under fire it might not be. Um, so um, I popped a little question out there I did have a look about it because I felt like maybe that might have been asked or found out before, again the, uh, just the. Uh, the masses amount of threads to look through. I did have a look, guys, honest. <laughs> uh, so I um, popped a question out there to see. I uh, haven't had an answer back yet, so we'll, we'll see what comes of that. Uh, okay, well, just getting back to finishing this this part off, because it, is, it isn't going to contain any gameplay, like I said. Um, so, yeah, I was setting things up. Um, I also got a respond from both Colin and Andrew. Unfortunately, Colin was a bit busy and he said he would get to it later, but um, Andrew stepped in uh, an hour or so after him and uh, gave me some explanation of how things are between... Well, not only between Mission 3 and 4, but he gives me the sort of general setup. I want to say that some of this looks like it's been taken from the actual mission instructions, but... Um, I could be wrong, it might be his word done. Then again, if he's involved with the rewriting of the rules, it could be a bit of both, couldn't it? It could be his word done and what's written in the rules. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, yeah, I don't want to stretch this. I, I think I might stretch on an hour 20 minutes or so, but I, I've set things up anyway. So uh, I'm, I'm concerned that... I'm still a bit concerned that we might go through this and make some blunders in it because it is different. Um, there's a few things that I'm not still that clear about. Um, these don't matter to the campaign. You still gain experience, though, so it helps for your it helps for your company get building up experience. But if you don't manage to do them, it doesn't matter. You can choose. I guess you could choose not to do them if you wanted to as well. Um, but I'm certainly going to show you the first one, and 
Um, hopefully I'll do it with all three platoons, to be honest. And like I've said, as long as you know what video you're watching, if you don't want to repeat another patrol uh, Grant going through it again, you know, sort of thing. Um, right. Let's try and get the because I've not, I've not got loads of time just now, but I'm hoping to get a bit of time later on. And if I've got this finished, then I might be able to sit down and get it started. Uh, right, first of all, our visibility. Now, uh, I got up to reading right through the rules up to section 9. And <laughs> section 9 is where, in fact, if I take that away, as I've not got the page, is visibility. Um, so I've not actually reread this in the new rules. I mean, don't get me wrong, I read it previously in the older rules, but um, I felt like I was up to a point at that time. Remember, that's... I got up to 68 pages, you know. Uh, so I haven't read this. It is only one page, so it's not too bad. And then it starts going into vehicle movement and AT combat, which I haven't read into either. Uh, there's quite a bit more to that. So, But I need to watch because I don't want to, like, you know, leave it until it's on top of me and then think, oh, I've got to start reading all these rules. So I'm going to have a read at this myself and then I'll go over a few things. Um, but obviously this is affecting the situation to start with. We've got to randomly select a limited visibility be between plus two and plus five. Well, there's plus two there, and then there's plus three, and then we've got plus four, and then we've got plus five. So that is what? Two, three, four, five. So a, D a D4 would give us the answer to that, as in draw a card and see what we've got. So why don't we just do that now? So I'm just going to draw a card off the top and we're looking at a 4 and basically a 1 out of 4 is going to be plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, right? Okay, so on a d4, what do we get? Um, and I don't know what we want here. We've got a 3, so that means it's quite deep in there. So that was plus 2, plus 3, so it's plus 4, isn't it? So it's plus 4 is the one that we're going to have for this mission. Um... I want to say the higher is maybe the trickier, but <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, we've got that to deal with as well. So that's going to be our um, visibility. Um, and I'll just put that beside the no contact marker. So we've got a plus four there. Yeah, I'm annoyed. I moved that command display down a little bit under the plexi and because I thought, oh, I've no need for the space there, but that's where I have the cards. It's not, it's not intruding, but it's almost intruding. Um, okay, and just browsing through this again. Yeah, we must move the platoon. Yeah, I've got this. Two two foxholes per card, mainline resistance, combat outposts with up to two foxholes, primary objectives. Uh, and then this is the other thing we need to do. You may place a target marker on any card per 6.7.5. So just glancing at what we've seen before regarding that, uh, well, actually, let's look in the new rules for that. Okay, great. Uh, that's And that's the thing about having the physical rule, but I was like, wait, right, okay, let's look in the new rules for that, because the reference in that mission book is the old rules. And I was like, right, where did I find that? Flipped three pages along and found it like that and knew exactly what I was looking for as well, which obviously helps. Uh, okay. So it says instructions for some missions indicate that you can begin the mission with a registered target or concentration marker on the map. If so, place a marker of the appropriate type on the card of your choice. Three code concentration markers are used in World War II. Oh. Right, I've got the wrong one then. Because I've got a I've got a <laughs> I've got a six code one. Which I think it says, well, six code target registry marker are used in later errors. Uh, I guess, right, it doesn't really make that much difference, but I'll go and find it anyway. They are functionally equivalent and will, will be referred to as target markers hereafter. Make a note in your log sheet of which firing agency a target marker is related to. Um, well, I think it can only, oh no, it can't. It, can, it could be one of the, can be artillery. Can place one target marker per incoming package. Right, hang on, hang on. Maybe this is the second bit and you're jumping ahead there, Grant. Let me find the right marker first before we move on. Uh, now, that's assuming that this isn't a new thing. 
Hey, give me a sec. Okay, I, I can't find them. Um, so it is possible, you know, it's not impossible that I, um, I do have them. It's the fact that they're green. Uh, so I'm looking in the sections that I've got, I've got green counters, but I'm not finding it. So I dare say it is possible that they've updated that though and cleaned it up a bit. Just added a wee bit more sort of to it, the fact that you get ones for separate ones for um uh, for World War Two. Yeah, I can't I can't see them. So it does kind of say that it it's, doesn't matter which you know they both do the same thing. So I'm going to use this one. Um, if somebody wants to confirm that they are in the deluxe edition, then yeah, uh, and I've not got it yet, then that's that would be good. Um, so reading on, uh, you may also, hang on, yeah, they're functionally equivalent to refer to, make a note on your log sheet of which firing agency a target marker is related to. Um, okay, what, what does it say in the mission? It says, um, you may place a target marker on any car per 6.7.5. I'm just going to quickly look at that. I'm not going to show you it up here. Trustings for some missions indicate that you can begin the mission with a registered target for off-map artillery, but not mortars, it says here. Interesting. I didn't see that there, did it? You may also place target marker on a card after it's a success successful fire mission on that card. From either off map artillery off map mortars, you can have no more than one target marker and play per firing agency. Right, mm, okay. Uh, right, I'm wanting to say that the mission book for that is maybe going to have something a bit more than you may place a target marker on any card. You may have no, no more than one, yeah. Uh, maybe I should just leave this out. It's not really... I mean, because at first I thought this was something that... An extra thing that you call firing, but it's not. It just says, add another card to the draw for an attempt to call for fire from an off-map firing agency for any fire by the firing agency on a card containing its target marker. Move the target marker if the firing agency successfully fires at a different target. And also here we we've got we've got our artillery forward observer with us. Uh, that is going to be in our first combat patrol actually. He's he's attached to the second platoon, and then the mortar forward observer is attached to the third platoon. Um, if I'm putting this out just now, I'm I putting it out just for this combat mission, and do I put another one out for when I run third platoon HQ and dedicate it to the mortar? You know, assign it to the mortar. Fire agency, whatever whatever they say it's called. Uh, I'm not so sure. Um, I think maybe the best bet would just be to leave them out, but leave them in here, and if Andrew gets a chance to see any of this and can maybe make a comment. Um, or maybe going out, maybe that's a question to to add as well. It's going to give you an extra card draw. I'm not really going to know where to put it. I mean, I could have a guess and just chuck it down, I suppose. Yeah, well, I'll maybe do that because I'm bringing... Well, I'm bringing that artillery forward observer with me on the very first mission, the very first patrol. So we're going to assign that to the artillery, okay? Uh, actually, no. It needs to be assigned to either the... 15th FA Battalion or the Regimental Cannon, I guess. So we'll atti we'll attach it to the 15th FA Battalion. And I suppose I should take put a note of that and say target AB1001 on my... Um, right, I'll just put... I'll put in the casualties box. Target AB... 
There you go, that, that's what I'm meaning is. I've just put artillery forward observer, it's a taxi saying between its wine experience, and that should just t tell us what it is. And I'll put that somewhere in a second once we move across to the map. And it doesn't really do anything apart from give me an extra card draw, I guess. I think I think that's what happens. Um Okay. And then is there any more Come on, Grant, let's not let's, let's go too far and I'm gonna to have to go as well just now, brief well, for a bit. We're, we're gonna get some food sorted. Um Yeah, I think I think we're okay. I think we're okay now with that. So let's move over to the map then and see. And then obviously so I've got my fox holes. Now, right, so I don't really see the point in going under the fox holes. The COHQ is going to start here, I've decided. So he's in uh, and And we've got to set up on this back row, but this is where a combat outpost is, and it says you're allowed to set up one platoon up here. Uh, and I might be mixing and matching this from what Andrew's replied to... Um, uh, and what them what it says about basically what Andrew says I'm kind of obviously going to go by, but um, I don't know if I'm talking uh, if this is in the second edition rules or even the first edition rules. Well, I should go back to that, but sorry, not the first edition rules, the third edition rules. Uh, go back to the combat patrol setup. Uh, the map includes yeah, all these positions may be occupied by the rest. of... Sorry, the map often includes company positions, foxholes, trenches, bunkers, or a combat outpost, tactical control. All these positions may be occupied by the rest of the company who may not move but are able to support the patrol by fire. You may place units from a single platoon up to the stacking limit in a combat outpost. Well, this is a combat outpost. We've got enough. I've checked the step limit on each of the three cards. I've just got three cards with the stuff on it, and it's fine. And... I mean, there's foxholes here, but if I put the stuff on the, under the foxholes, we cannot communicate. You know, I mean, yes, they can run on their initiative, um, and maybe that's... And we know that when they're under a foxholes, they do get the extra um, plus one, you know, towards the card drawers, so... Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I'm just not sure. So I've left everybody out in the open on the cards, right? So we've got, this is a platoon that's doing the mission, second platoon. Uh, this is a platoon that's in the combat output. So these and these cannot move at all. And the COHQ is not part of it as well, but he's going to just sit on this card and do what he can. Once the second platoon gets moved, now... Now the second platoon is going to um is going to move. Its first root point is in the orchard grove here. Second root point is going to be in the cemetery here, and then its objective is here in the hedgerow bocage. So and then he's just going to double back. I'm not going to mess about too much with this one. Uh, so he's going to come back here. That's his root point three, and then four. I've turned them upside to sort of say they're coming back, but I suppose that was necessary, but. Uh, so, root point three, root point four, and then, um, well, whether he needs to move back onto that card or not, I suppose, uh, we must. Um, yeah, okay, so that's my setup, and uh, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've changed things about a bit, so some of my attachments have changed. And we also have two heavy machine gun teams attached, and I'm hoping that I've got the right counters for them. You can see one one HMG there. It's got automatic weapons, tripod, very long range, and we've got two heavy machine guns here. So we've got two of them, and they both start with six ammo. It told us that at the beginning. I'll show us that when we go back to the log sheet. Um, I've got the mortar forward observer attached to the third platoon, along with a 50 cal machine gun. They're on the hill here. And at first I also had the mortar here as well. Then remember, this is a woods card. So I've not... That's not woods, is it? Doesn't look like it. It's hedgerow bacage. Right, okay. So at first I had him here and I thought, well, that's pointless. The mortar can't fire for there. So I've put him here. Uh, attached the first platoon this time, the mortar, so he can, he can fire. So 
although they're not up high you can see that there's white borders around they can fire out in this card yeah not that way but it can fire through the cemetery into this card like i say this is on the hill so can see one two three you can see right to there and then can also see right to the farm here so it seemed like a plan um, I've got to remember that if any, if the 50 cal or the mortar, no, no. Yeah, and the mortar's the same, isn't it? If any of them want to fire, um, actually, the mortar would not be able to then, wouldn't it? The 50 cal can fire above uh, friendly units, so, yeah, so it can. Yeah, I forgot about that. Anyway, okay, so that's my setup. Right, just quickly bashing through this, so I've not got an awful lot of time left. Nothing much change here, pyrotechnics. And you know what, they're all ceasefire again. There's a couple of other ones that you could do about moving towards root points and things like that, but I'm not going to mess with it. So any coloured smoke or the clusters or the parachutes are all just ceasefire. Um, I know it's maybe a bit boring, but... Um, where are we going to put this target marker? Uh, do you think we should just put it on our target? Yeah, let's just put it up here. Let's just put it up here. This is our objective, right? So I think if, I want, if I'm going to call in artillery fire on that card, I get one extra card draw. I think that's how it works. Um, again, we're sort of... Sort of... Uh, learning here a little bit no contact we've got plus four moon so i'm going to read that before we start play i'm going to read up on the elimination thing just to find out what all that means i want to say that we're not going to be able to save as many commands because we've got limited visibility um and whether that has another effect or not i'm not sure well let's have a quick rundown on uh, andrew's response to my question my question was you don't really need to go through it. It's about mission three and the transition between mission three and mission four. And I was going to start asking questions about the cover marker stay, what happens with minefields, the minefields hang about, etc. Um, but I thought, let's just leave it there and let him, if he's assuming the time to like jot something down. So it's, it's not too much here. So we'll go through that. So units not involved in the patrols may be set up on the map. Okay, we've, We've got all of them set up on the map. Place units from up to one platoon in the COP, the combat outpost. Place any others in the, in the fortifications in row one. Now, he has said in the fortifications, which means the foxholes, uh, I'm assuming that's optional. And he has said there that you've got, you place them in the fortifications. Uh, It's just for communication, I'm thinking there, Andrew, yeah, but the way you're wording it there, it might be that they're meant to be in there. The problem right away, well, that's not true. Our second platoon could be in the fortifications with the COHQ. I'm going to, I'm going to take it, your, that, that the word in there is, you know, you, you may place them in fortifications or not. I'm just still, I still kind of struggle with the, the whole communication thing now that i've found out about the, the cover obviously I, I clearly didn't did not play the game like this before and i played it wrongly um but i just if we put any of these things under these foxholes they're obviously going to have to act on their initiative which okay they get a plus one for being under that i get that um should we just do it since it says it there Because, I, I mean, I've not put the combat outpost under fortification, uh, under the foxholes either. Because I kind of wanted the COHQ to be able to, like, activate them. Right, let's, let's read on to this and I'll make a decision at the end. Um, These units may be given orders and will open fire on enemies in line of sight, but they may not move and are not eligible to receive promotions through experience points. Any units not set up on the map are not used in this mission. Well, in fact, hang on, I'll take the jeep off then. I put the jeep on because I thought I had to maybe play some, but it's, I'm not going to use it again. Uh, since one 
since only one platoon is actually taking part in the patrol, have all the draws for general initiative rounded down. Yeah, I remember that rule. Well, I was hopefully going to remember that rule. So whenever we draw for general initiative, you're going to have to half it, rounding it down. So you're not going to get an awful lot uh, regarding that. Each patrol is played on the same map, okay? And then at the end of a patrol, follow the mission reattempt sequence described in the rulebook 3.9 to award experience. To award experience points, reconstitute your platoon and update the map ready for the next patrol. Okay, well, that was the bit that we were going to look at, but we decided there was quite a lot in it and we'll just leave it for a bit. Um, well, once we come to that time. Replace any removed PC markers. Uh, any skills bought with experience points are carried over in the next mission. So, yeah, so any removed PC markers, they're all going to get replaced again for the next combat patrol. Okay. During a campaign game, there is no penalty for not completing a combat patrol mission unless you are playing survivor mode and somehow have your H COHQ on row one become a casualty. Yeah, so it's saying that really shouldn't happen, but uh, we're not playing this survivor mode. We're just playing the normal thing. Note that only platoons who actually carry a patrol are eligible to gain experience points. So he's reminding us of that again. Scouting terrain. Each patrol takes part on the same map. The map will also continue to be used in Mission 4 if playing as a campaign. So I was right here with us. Retain all cover markers, friendly and enemy, and minefields. Uh, hang on. Right, sorry, phone call. I couldn't, uh, couldn't get the pause button. Uh, in very good time there, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so just finishing, sorry, I don't know where I was at. Scouting terrain, let's just read this bit again. Each patrol takes part in the same map. The map will also continue to be used in Mission 4 if playing as a campaign. Retain all cover markers, friendly and enemy, and minefields discovered during the, your patrols. Now, this will mean that you may end up with minefields on your objective cards in Mission 4. This is not much fun, and the team of engineers who might help you out there are not in second edition. So that must be something that they're going to add or, or something. I did come across some engineers there, but I've never used them. So he says, I would remove any minefields from the objective cards as opposed to keeping them and working around them. Clearing the rows is more challenging and makes for a better mission. Set up mission four with the company on row one with no staging area. Yes, this will mean they all start on a card with a PC marker. Have fun. So that last bit I was kind of surprised about because um, on looking through some of the threads previously, it seemed to suggest that um, a US unit couldn't start on a card. On a, well, couldn't start on a card with a PC marker, but... Maybe that's totally not the case and it might just be somebody else saying something that they thought. Um, it did kind of worry me a bit about the combat outpost um, here that we've got, but it does say... Now, where did, where did I see that? Yes, yes, here. Setting up for the next... Well, it says setting up for the next patrol, but the information here says uh, no PC markers are placed on the COP if one is in play. So I know this is setting up for the next patrol, but I'd like to think that the first one... Yeah, units positioned in a COP or other friendly field fortifications may be repositioned between patrols, although they may not move. Yeah, I'm starting to worry that we maybe need to be set up in the foxholes. I mean... I get the feeling I'm going to be told that no, that was just if you wanted to, but I don't want to start the mission and not have them, have them under the fox rules if they are meant to be. You can see that they're probably going to be starting in that position, you know, hunkered down and sort of, it's just the whole communication thing, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. So, um... Yeah, because even, even, just looking across here, I was thinking to myself, well, it's not so bad for second platoon because he's the one I'm using it first. We can put the COHQ under the same foxholes as him so it can activate him the first time. But then as soon as the platoon moves away um, onto this card or send something on the card, okay, maybe it might be a turn or two. I might do the usual break off. 
assault team up ahead, let's have a look. And then maybe clear that car, maybe find we get lucky and then send the second platoon up there. Um, then the COHQ is going to be back here under the foxholes and then not be able to communicate with it. So... I don't know though, I don't know if um, if it's allow if I'm allowed not to have them under the voxels. But yeah, it's just it's just a nightmare. It means that not, none of them can be activated, but apart from wherever the COHQ is initially stacked with, you know, under the same voxels. Um okay. Well, um, I'll work out that one for sure, and what I might actually chuck out another quick question there. I'm going to have to go for now, um, and that is almost an hour and a half in this part. Uh, but I think we're ready to go. Game turn one, second platoon's doing its thing. Um, yeah, I think we're we're good to go. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it for now and hopefully get back tonight to get this started. Um, and these might, these might end up being under fault, so I, I, I don't know. I might just, yeah. I suppose what Andrew's said there, I could just reply to his uh, comment about that and just say, look, do, do they have to start under the fault, Um That's all you need to ask her. Right, okay, well, I'll work that one out and I'll come back with a decision later. Uh, okay, cheers.